Thank you for coming. This is a great system for reducing endometriosis pain that has been in place since 1999. It's a result of years of research and development. And we work super hard on it. It's a whole new way of thinking about endometriosis based on new scientific evidence. It's an incredible system for reducing the pain of endometriosis. Women are living pain-free and getting their lives back. How do I know women are getting their lives back? Well, I got this email several years ago. I had stage 4 endometriosis for 18 years. I had been to 24 doctors, gone to two operations, and had been on powerful narcotic pain relievers for the past six years. They had no answers except to get pregnant, go on continuous birth control, or go on disability because I was missing so much work. Only after a month of using progestel and avoiding xenoestrogens, my long blonde hair stopped falling out in big gobs in the shower. My pain was cut by 75% of my period. And by the third period, I stopped having bowel pain altogether. I'm able to surf, go out with friends, and care for my two adopted children. Thank you for helping me get my life back. And so this patient had called me up on the phone and she was crying. She was in extreme pain one week out of the month and was ready to go on disability. And she asked me, can you help me? And I said, this is no problem. Okay, and so after about nine months of being off xenoestrogens and taking progesterone, she was essentially normal and never went on disability and went back to working and surfing. So there's proof. I just think I'd like to share another testimony. And uh, this woman wanted to make sure you believe that she was a real customer and not a paid company spokesperson and wanted to use her real full name. For six years, I suffered terrible menstrual periods. I'd have horribly pain, sharp cramps, nausea, vomiting, fainting, and be stuck in bed. Nothing seemed to work, not even morphine for the unbearable pain in the emergency room. The first month I used Progestel, the pain was nowhere near as bad. I did not vomit or faint, and I was not stuck in bed. So this is a real patient, and uh, you can find her on Facebook. And these emails remind us of why we do what we do. So we have 18,000 customers that use progesterone and progestel, and 3,000 of these endometriosis patients were treated in, since 1999 to 2013. And we have an above 90% success rate in those endometriosis patients that follow directions exactly. Over the past 12 to 13 years, we've shipped to 31 countries. We shipped to Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Iceland, France, Great Britain, Spain, Italy, Greece, Singapore, Japan, Korea, Australia, Taiwan, and China. And so um, this is our product. Uh, we're very happy about it. It's pro we call it Progestel. It's natural progesterone in coconut oil. So that's all it is, a very simple formulation, just progesterone and coconut oil. So um, first I want to talk about uh, this hormone, progesterone, that mimics pregnancy. And then I want to talk about the cause of endometriosis. So from your mainstream physician, your mainstream physician says, if you want to get rid of endometriosis, get pregnant. Pregnancy retards or cures endometriosis. So I, I and other physicians have said, well, what you can do instead, instead of get pregnant, is to create a fake pregnancy by giving natural progesterone. So progesterone is the hormone of pregnancy. Pro means for, gesterone means for gestation. So progesterone means for gestation. So progesterone is the hormone of pregnancy. 
Now the fertility MDs, the test tube guys who uh, try to get you to conceive and have a baby, they use natural progesterone routinely to prevent miscarriage and that does not create birth defects. However, synthetic brand name progestins create birth defects, you know, the progestins that are found in birth control pills. So it's extremely important to use natural progesterone. And so pregnancy is equivalent to taking progesterone. If you're pregnant, you produce a lot of progesterone. But if you're not pregnant and you want to look like a pregnant woman, well, simply take progesterone. So I want to need I want you to 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 warn you about a painful lesson that I learned. Um, and the problem is many over the counter and pharmacy compounded progesterone creams contain estrogenic herbs and preservatives. And this is one painful lesson I learned. You have to be very careful because many of the over the counter progesterone creams and even the compounded creams contain estrogenic herbs and preservatives. Back in 1999, when I started treating endometriosis patients, I would tell them to buy an off-the-shelf progesterone cream. My patients would call Lock and say, Hey, Doc, now I'm worse. What's the deal? So let me explain what happened. In 1999, my 70-year-old mother had a fibroid the size of a grapefruit. She had been on synthetic estrogen. So I took her off the synthetic estrogen. Likely... If I had done this alone, her fibroid would have disappeared. I had read John Lee's M MD's book, What Your Doctor May Not Tell You About Menopause, and he suggested to give her progesterone cream to make her fibroid disappear. So from his list of creams in the book, I bought one and sent it to my mother. After one month of using it, she called me back and said her fibroid was bigger now. So I began to study the particular progesterone cream that I had given her. They said they had purposely put rosemary into their cream for hot flashes, and it was a phytoestrogen. So I said, what's a phytoestrogen? And they answered, these are plants that act like estrogen. I, w I was completely surprised that a plant could actually act like estrogen. That's why her fibroid had gotten bigger. So I went back to John Lee MD's book and got a second cream and gave that to my mother. And in three months, the fibroid disappeared. So this is great. You know, fibroid's gone in three months. But then I became curious about the second cream. So I went down to visit my brother in Austin, Texas, and used the University of Texas uh, computer database, looked at their MSDS uh, sheets in the computer database to check out the ingredients of the second cream. And I found that this second cream contained sterile conium chloride. 3 cc's of sterile conium chloride taken orally causes fatal convulsions in adults, according to the Texas database. So I called up the maker of these, this cream, the second cream. I asked them, how can you do this? This is fairly toxic. I'm giving it to my mom. And they'd answered, we're doing nothing wrong. This is just a standard cream. They come in five-gallon buckets, mix the progesterone into it, and package it. I was shocked. 3 cc. That means if she, dr if she ate a third of the bottle of that progesterone cream, she would die of fatal convulsions. Then I started looking at the department stores and found the vast majority of cosmetics and toiletries contained ingredients that were not good for you. These chemicals could either be toxic, carcinogenic, or hormone disruptive. All three of these are different categories. So then I started looking at the health food store. I love the health food store. I go to the health store and buy organic food. But I found that many of their products had estrogenic herbs in them. Furthermore, I went to the compounding pharmacist. And I found that many of the compounded progesterone creams had parabens in, in them as a preservative. Now, parabens have been in use for about 30 years. They're not toxic. They're not carcinogenic. And they're not hormone disruptive when taken orally. Parabens on the skin are not toxic, and they're not carcinogenic. However, parabens on the skin increase rat uterine weight by 22%. So parabens on the skin made my endometriosis patients worse. 
So parabens are okay if taken orally, but if you put them on the skin, they act like an estrogen and make your endometriosis worse. So what are what are xenoestrogens? Um, xenoestrogens are chemicals or herbs that mimic estrogen, and xenoestrogens cause endometriosis. So I'd like to roll for you a short uh, teaser video from Frontline PBS, and you can purchase the full video from Frontline. But let me just roll that video right now. Six years ago, marine biologists became alarmed at reports of massive fish kills on the rivers in this region. Every year, smallmouth bass were being decimated by some mysterious problem. Spring and fall, hundreds of fish would be found floating in the water, belly up. I caught up with Vicki right Blazer, mm -hmm. a fish pathologist with the U.S. Geological Survey, who was trying to figure out why the fish were dying. What do we got here? So here we have this large discolored area in the yeah. liver. Yeah. And then you see all these little white spots. Here's another totally discolored area. And that's a signal of some, some bigger problem. Yes, when we see a really high prevalence in a population, that indicates there's some problem going on in that water. And when Blazer dug deeper, she found a surprise. One of the major and most interesting findings was intersex in the male bass. When we look at the male gonads or testes, what we find is immature eggs within the male testes. So you got sort of feminization of male fish. Is that a big alarming finding in marine biology, aquatic biology? Yes, and that has certainly attracted a lot of concern and attention. Scientific studies have linked abnormal mutations in marine creatures, like intersex, to exposure to chemical compounds that mimic or imitate natural hormones in the body. These chemicals are called endocrine disruptors. Endocrine disruptors are very, very potent chemicals at infinitesimally small quantification. I mean, you're talking about parts per million or parts per billion. They interrupt the normal way in which the body controls everything from growth and development to thyroid function to reproductive function to estrogen levels, testosterone levels. So they're very, very important, and they are a, a deep concern because there are so many of them now. There are thousands of these worrisome chemicals that have gotten into the environment. And one reason is that they're part of everything we do. The list of things that bring these organic pollutants into our bodies is a long list. And it ranges from home care products, soaps, toothpaste, cleaning agents in the household, to things we put on our lawns, the things that we use all the time, the plastic industry, the rubber industry, uh, lubricants, fuels, uh, the highways. When you see scientists like Vicki Blazer cutting open fish, finding intersex uh, in the male fish, seeing high levels of fish kills, seeing immune systems disrupted, seeing other damage to the fish, is that a warning to you potentially about human health? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the warning not, not just from the smallmouth bass in the Potomac, but uh, from amphibians all across the country. You have frogs with six legs, hermaphroditic frogs, uh, male frogs with ovaries, female frogs with male uh, genitalia. These are the canaries, the modern canary in the mine that we haven't been playing, uh, paying enough attention to. Poisoned Waters, watch online or on air beginning April 21st. So xenoestrogens uh, that were shown in this video are shown as synthetic chemicals. However, there are actually natural herbs that act like estrogen as well. And uh, to demonstrate that principle, uh, here's a page from the Android app that you can download for free. And here's that page. This is a free app that you can download on your Android, Kindle, or Nook. As you can see here, xenoestrogens can be natural and organic as well.